my name is Raghu Yellori and I'm uh, a senior principal engineer in uh, Intel Corporation. And I work in, I'm the chief architect for Project Amber, which is a trust service that you might have heard uh, Greg Lavender speak about it earlier today. Uh, and uh, there is a session later on Project Amber and, and we, we're gonna get into a lot of details there, okay? In the next 15 minutes, what I'm gonna talk about is, uh, you know, what I call a path to the vision of confidential clubs, okay? Uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna quickly kind of level set on what confidential clouds are, what we mean by confidential clouds, and more importantly, focus on what are the requirements for confidential clouds. Okay, so let me start with an assertion first, right? Uh, I believe in the next seven to 10 years, all clouds will be confidential clouds. And you will not qualify the word, the clouds with the word confidential uh, at, at that time. By their very nature, clouds will be confidential. And what this means is 70 to 75% or even more than that applications that will run in clouds will all run in confidential environments, okay? A uh, lot of things have to happen for this to come to fruition. So let's kind of dig into that a little bit. Uh, but before we go there, let me kind of uh, give a basic definition of what I mean by confidential clouds, okay? Uh, confidential clouds, uh, not surprisingly, provide strong isolation, auditable isolation and security for customer workloads and data. And they are protected from everything to do with the infrastructure, the administrators of the infrastructure, uh, DevOps, malware, other tenants, custom admins, everything, okay? And these protections are across the IT spectrum, compute network storage, whether you're on-prem, whether you're public, whether you're on edge, doesn't matter, okay? And the data owners pretty much control where the data gets stored, where it's transmitted, who uses it. Again, the strong emphasis is on policy, traceability, so that as a data owner, you would know where your data is, where it's getting processed, where it's, who, where it's getting transmitted, and which services are transmitting it, okay? Fundamentally, confidential clouds are built on confidential computing technologies, everything that you have been hearing since morning today at the OC3 conference, okay? People generally tend to focus on confidential computing primarily, oh, it's a CPU uh, technologies only, but confidential clouds require that the confidential computing technologies go beyond that. They go to anywhere where customer data and code are touched, whether it is GPUs, FPGAs, accelerators, NICs, storage devices, any component on the platform that touches customer data and code needs to enable confidential computing, okay? So if I really summarize what are confidential clouds, confidential clouds keep the infrastructure and the cloud provider outside the trust boundary or the TCB. So what are we really saying by that, saying that, okay? Keeping the service provider outside the trust boundary, but you want to leverage the scale, the services, the automation, the elasticity that is provided by the cloud provider to run the customer workloads, to operate on your data, et cetera, okay? This is a new paradigm, okay? It fundamentally transforms the way the shared responsibility model for cloud is designed today, okay? And it's not easy, okay? A lot of requirements have to be addressed to realize this vision so that you can operationalize confidential clouds, okay? You need uh, requirements in to basic technology, in development and deployment methodologies, monitoring and operations, governance, et cetera, okay? The good news is there's a lot of progress happening on many of these vectors in the industry, okay? You heard from uh, Greg Lavender, uh, Intel's uh, CTO speak today about the progress in the industry on some of this. You know, if you had been to uh, some of the sessions from uh, different architects from different companies, you've seen uh, uh, confidential computing technologies, uh, you know, uh, confidential compute IO, and you know, the progress uh, that NVIDIA is making on H100s and making them confidential computer aware. So a lot of progress on various fronts on this space, okay? But there are still a lot of gaps, 
Okay. Uh, if I look at what is required to operationalize confidential clubs, okay, you know, I can think of nine, ten requ key requirements. Again, this by no means this is complete. These I think are like the top eight or nine requirements that you need. Okay. Uh, given that it's a 15 minute session, I don't think I'll be able to go through all of this, but I'm going to try to cover the first five. Okay. Uh, and, and these requirements both impact the provider of confidential computing, and it also impacts the customer of the cloud itself. Okay. The first one, the first obvious one is pervasive availability of confidential computing infrastructure. Okay. Uh, again, this is a basic requirement. The good news is most of the CPU vendors today are supporting trusted execution environments, which is the basis for enabling confidential computing. The software enabling layers are getting mature day every day. Hypervisors, the guest OSs, the container runtimes, the orchestration of container software that is getting enabled for confidential computing and development tools, okay? There are SDKs, there are library OSs, there are uh, uh, other abstractions that make it easier for you to build confidential computing uh, and uh, workloads, okay? Service providers like Azure, like Google, they are offering confidential IaaS today. And as we speak, they are launching more and more confidential computing enabled services. OSVs like VMware, are announcing uh, support for confidential computing inside their uh, uh, you know, hypervisor virtualization environments. And there are a lot of solutions in the ecosystems that are beginning to uh, take advantage of confidential computing, but also add services for confidential computing in order to get to the vision of confidential clouds. Okay, beyond the CPUs, like I said, a lot of work is happening in enabling GPUs and FPGAs and accelerators to be trusted and be part of the confidential computing workflows. Okay, uh, if you have attended the session on uh, the NVIDIA uh, GPU attestation and also the uh, TIO session earlier today, there was a lot of discussion on the various uh, DMTF standards, the various IETF standards, and the TEIO uh, specifications that are beginning to uh, mature uh, towards industry's direction for uh, confidential computing. Okay, the second big requirement towards the operationalizing confidential clouds is attestation verification services. Okay, attestation. I mean, you heard it many times. I'm going to repeat it today again. It is the ground truth of confidential computing. It enables what we call trust nothing, verify everything model, which aligns very well with the zero trust principles that you may be familiar with, okay? And the idea is that you verify the trustworthiness of the infrastructure where the trusted execution environments are and also the applications running on that infrastructure, okay? Attestation services can be, uh, can have different deployment models, okay? You can have CSP hosted models, you can have third-party attestation, which is kind of operator independent. And you know, for the ultra paranoid, you also have the do-it-yourself kind of a model where you don't trust anybody, you want to have an attestation verification system for yourself, okay? All of these are very viable models. It all depends on the trust model the uh, and the security requirements that you as an end customer of confidential computing requires, okay? A uh, couple of uh, kind of words of uh, suggestions from my side, pay attention to things like scale of the verification services, availability of their verification services, reliability and total cost of ownership because attestation, whether you like it or not, it's going to be on the critical path of execution of your workloads and your applications and their security. Okay, so, so you want an attestation service that can scale. You want an attestation service that's highly available and reliable so that your workload SLAs, your, cost, your, your service SLAs don't get uh, uh, compromised by the availability of the service itself. Okay, 
again pay attention to multi cloud requirements okay most customers these days are not a single cloud deployment environments they have workloads running in multiple clouds they can have the same workloads running in multiple clouds okay you want to have build once deploy across multiple clouds kind of a scenario there that way you are not building to an attestation service that is specific to one one type of requirements but you have the ability for multi cloud requirements okay uh, project amber is an intel service that you're going to talk we're going to talk about in at, at two o'clock and then on, on stage two so you can hear more about it but uh most csps have their own attestation services there are a lot of isvs like fortanix like anjuna like uh, uh, edgeless system they all have some concept of an attestation verification service as part of them, them their solutions as well okay so this is a very core requirement for operationalizing confidential clouds and uh, uh, you know you need to pay attention to this one okay the number three thing that people generally don't talk about is this idea of delivering key brokering and distribution okay today when you think about key management systems or key delivery systems you know the keys are encrypted the the secrets or keys they are encrypted and they are delivered to the applications that are running in the cloud okay and you deliver it in a way just in time right prior to execution however these keys are in clear during execution okay and the same set of problems that we talk about for confidential compute apply to this one okay uh, keys are easily stolen if they are in memory the threat model is very uh, very clear on on what you need to protect there okay when you get to confidential clouds these keys are delivered only after you verify that your applications are running in the right tee they are running in the tee first that they are running in the right tees and the application code that's running inside the TEs is exactly the one that you are expecting it to run there. Okay. And these keys are delivered directly into the trusted execution environment. So your keys are never in the clear when you're running in confidential environments. For this to happen, there are some very key requirements. The key walls, the key management systems, the key brokers they all have to integrate with attestation services that we talked about in number two okay so that you can verify so that the key vaults can verify the trustworthiness of the confidential computing environment and potentially verify the certain policies before they can deliver the keys to those environments okay and these policies and policy declarations have, have to be uh, policy executions have to be very flexible so that they can be uh, accommodated easily without making big making any changes to the applications or the key management systems themselves okay this is a very critical requirement that uh, the confidential stack has to address if you want to make uh, confidential clouds operational uh, at scale that you're looking for okay uh, a quick look at time here the i'm just going to quickly run through the last two here governance i think uh, if you have attended mark Novak's session uh, right before this uh, there was a lot of discussion on governance so i'm going to keep it a little light here but this is a probably the very complex requirement and least understood today in confidential clouds and in confidential computing environments okay there are a lot of open questions in this space how do you specify what is a desired state in a confidential cloud okay how do you detect a breach? Okay, uh, what changes do you need in a shared responsibility model? And for for the hardware vendors, what new telemetry is needed in order to uh, provide uh, uh, a sufficient level of governance for confidential clouds? Okay, uh, these are all very open questions. There have there are certain answers for these, but the not the answers are not fully comprehensive at this time. Okay. And then on top of it, when you think about security controls that are listed in the, the NIST 853 or PCI DSS or even in, in the CSA uh, documents, right? The, the cloud uh, uh, control models, are the controls there sufficient or do we need more controls for confidential cloud? The answer is not clear there also, okay? Uh, there's a lot of work happening in the context of NIST and other uh, 
regulatory bodies to figure out what is required for confidential computing and confidential clouds, but it's still very work in progress at this time. Okay, my expectation is next four or five years, things will get codified in these security controls. And then uh, X number of years after that, they become implemented in uh, various tools, various methodologies. So it becomes common practice for cloud practitioners to use. Okay, uh, the Confidential Computing Consortium Working Group, the Governance Working Group, or Governance SIG rather, uh, is, uh, is a big first step in my mind towards addressing these questions. And the expectation for that from that SIG at least is that there will be some actionable guidance coming to TE vendors, ISVs, OSVs, and CSPs on what are the countries that are required to be implemented and what is the best known practice to implement this so that it requires the, the, the regulatory and compliance requirements for confidential clouds.